What's up, guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out one of my personal favorites just because I feel like it, but also because it's had a ton of updates. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the utterly incredible RoboQuest. As you may have no doubt noticed from the title of this video, I think very highly of this game. And in fact, I believe that. In the world of roguelites, this is the best roguelite you could possibly spend your money on. Everything here is done basically flawlessly and then backed up with a soundtrack that's done by Noise Cream, which is a guy that really knows his way around some synthwave. So, what is this game? This is a game where you are a post-apocalyptic robot that's being run by a little girl, and you are going back into the inhabited areas that have been wiped out by tons of robots in order to fight your way back on in and figure out how you can fix it and how you can get rid of all the robot hordes. If after watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself, it's been an early access for quite some time now. We've covered the game, uh oh, that's not good. We've covered the game a lot of times, but along the way, it just keeps getting better and better and better. They keep adding more weapons, they keep adding more items, they keep adding more mods, and then they mix that up with a beautiful dollop of Diablo 2 in there for like all the random things that you can get added onto your various affixes, and the game just ends up being really rad. We can get a power cell or we can get an ice cannon. Ice cannon's pretty fun. I like that. Wait, they took away my. Hold on. I want my SMG bag for sure. Let's go this way, though. Uh, there are lots of metagame unlocks to get in this game. There's tons of exploration. One thing that I really like about this game is you see how, like, if you look up, there's a whole bunch of pipes and stuff, like, all over the place. Uh, in general, if you can kind of, like, see a ledge in this game, you can probably get to it somehow. It may not always be obvious how you get to it, but this is a game that has a lot of respect. Uh, for like maximum traversal basically and i like that a lot too ice cannon appears to be doing a pretty good job weapons in this game are divided up into a couple of different classes there's launchers there's energy weapons and there's basically bare basic projectile weapons they all behave in their own way there's four or five classes in the game right now i've played four of them i have not played the fifth class since the last time i played the game the fifth class is new but i just haven't gotten around to upgrading him yet However, I doubt that I would play him very much because he seems to be kind of like a roguey type class. I tend to prefer the big heavy tanky classes, which is what we're playing right now. We've got a paladin bubble. That's our special ability. We can also level up, so we just got a perk. The perk will allow us to develop sort of like a build to make ourselves more awesome. Every four shots, your next weapon shot does 60% more damage. I want that. Let's do that. Over here, we've got power cells. We've got the power gloves. Dual crossbows. I'm just going to take the power cells. I don't like any of those other options. Over here, we've got a weapon vendor. They're selling a thumper. On this side, we've got a TV remote. This will reduce your safety bubble cooldown by 25%, but using it as a 15% chance to hack you. I don't know what hacking means, but it doesn't sound pleasant to me, and it sounds like the kind of thing that I would not want to have happen. Now, we can go to the quarry, we can go to the oasis, or we can go to the ruins. I want to go to the ruins. Let's go to the ruins. These paths are not all unlocked by default at the beginning of the game. As you explore and as you run around, you will find keys that allow you to get into these different paths. And you don't need to find the key on every single run. Once you found the key once, it will unlock that path and that new biome forever. So keep an eye out. Make sure that you're climbing all over things and giving the game the full jungle gym experience. This is a very fast paced game. However, recently they actually kind of reduced the velocity of it a little bit. So this used to be a game that was kind of begging you to speed run it. No long, oh, I got chunked right there. No longer. Uh, so basically the game, it used to give you like a rating uh, based on just like how fast you played through the level and how many kills you got. Now it splits those up into two separate categories so that like slow and precise players that like to get everything are not punished, but also the players that like to go fast are not punished either. You get rewarded based on your play style, which I think is actually a really solid change. That was one of the few things about this game that I think kind of like annoyed me a little bit is that I always felt like the game was like, go, 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 go. Like I always felt like I was being punished for taking time to explore the upper rafters and look for keys and stuff like that. A game doesn't do that anymore. You get rewarded based on what it is that you decide to do. 
I'm gonna need to level up this machine gun. Your guns also level up. When your guns level up, they get affixes, just like a Diablo weapon that will cause them to deal more damage or like AOE every fifth shot or maybe like freeze an enemy or maybe it makes the bullet bounce and hit two guys consecutively. Just sort of depends and these weapons can get utterly absurdly overpowered in combination with your build depending on what you like to do. If you've ever played a game called Gunfire Reborn, this game and Gunfire Reborn I think are the only two first person shooter action RPG roguelites that have really ever gotten that down uh, where they've got that mix just perfect where like if you're paying attention you can have some really powerful runs if you're not paying attention you will occasionally stumble onto a super powerful run and so i kind of dig that we got rank a so we killed a lot of the enemies and we moved through the level reasonably quickly as far as the game is concerned let's go ahead and carry on forward and it will give us a little cutscene here the game has comic books that it will give you to kind of like unveil the storyline every single time you defeat a boss uh, ooh, I've got this one. This right here. This song by Noise Cream is dope. I have this on my Spotify playlist. I cannot speak highly enough of Noise Cream. Noise Cream was a synthwave artist that I was unaware of until I played this specific game. And then once I found out, I started looking him up on Spotify. The guy's discography is, like, spotless. How this guy is not as popular as, like, Scandroid or as popular as, like, Dance with the Dead or Perturbator, I don't know. But he deserves that spot, so hopefully he'll get there at some point. As a musician myself, it always bums me out to see musicians not really get the respect that they deserve. I'm going to go ahead and grab that buff right there. It's going to give me a 10% chance to stun whenever I hit an enemy. I don't really need that over there, but we are going to want to get higher level weapons. One of the downsides to this game is that, like, as you... This is not necessarily a bad thing i'm just saying like something you need to pay attention to while playing this game is that every single level you go through the enemies are going to get stronger and they are going to get tougher and they're going to have a larger hp pool and so you need to be upgrading your weapons uh, this means that you can't really just sit on one weapon that you like for an entire run uh, you kind of have to be hot swapping weapons left and right for higher quality ones here and there Luckily enough, there seem to be a lot of weapons that will fit your playstyle. So if you like fully automatic weapons, if you like sniper rifles, if you like revolvers, if you like SMGs, or if you like shotguns, there are a lot of them, and there are a lot of weapon drops as well as you're playing through the game. So in general, you shouldn't have too much of a problem finding the things you like to play with, just with like kind of like brief excursions from using those things on the in-between. I'm going to go ahead and get those guys right there. Uh, I have been hacked, I believe. It's a little bit problematic. This is one of those rooms that I tend to lose a lot of HP on because, dude, stop that right now. Quit that. Oh, it's the camera. Okay. Uh, where's that little camera bot at? Let's get him. All right. Back up to the launcher. Walked right back into a bullet, feeling a little embarrassed about it. Wish that I hadn't walked back into the bullet. Got to vent my gun. There we go. Wipe them on out. I do want to pick up all their little shards and things, though. These are called, I'm going to put this on right here so that I can just run through and grab all the HP. Uh, they're called scraps. That's what the little green things are. And different classes interact with the scraps in different ways. Uh, so depending, you will get more or less scraps. And those scraps will do different stuff depending on what class you play. In general, they all heal you. Uh, they all make you get some HP back to your meter. But some classes get like their cooldowns reduced and stuff like that when they pick them up. Uh, the classes as of right now is there's a recon. There's like a defender, like a tank, which is what we're playing. There's an engineer, which is the other class that I like to play. Uh, yeah, that works, actually. That's a really good replacement for our level one SMG. This is a two-star SMG, so this will work out. Enemies, where you at? I got lots of bucka, and I'm ready to talk. There, see how much faster we're killing mobs now? That right there is precisely why you want to level up your weapons periodically. You will occasionally find workbenches and things. I think the workbenches will allow you to add or remove affixes or like upgrade things at certain points in your run, but it's been a while since I played the game last, so I would need to investigate it. So when we see one, I shall investigate. Sir, sir, can I have your HPs, please? Uh, the game is fairly generous with HP. You don't really need to worry about running out. As long as you're not getting hit like every eight to nine seconds, you should be all right. Where is this shield generator at? Shield generator's gotta go. Shield generator was in a really awkward spot right there, like way in the backfield. I'm gonna go up and over the top and, oh man, turret. What's up, buddy? Would you like to get shot? I would like to shoot you. All right, turret has been shot. A few more little bro bots down here that need to get blappers. 
Uh, the game does have a built-in double jump, and the game also has a built-in dash that you can play around with. What is this? The mortar? That is definitely a mortar. Wait, what did I just load that with? Is it firing just like hot coals? Huh. Interesting. Uh, we do have a new level up, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Reduces the number of shots required to trigger Quadrinity to three, or we can get boost healing cell and repair robot efficiency. We can also get better bash damage. Every single character has a melee attack in this game. Uh, by the way, I'll probably just upgrade Quadrinity. There's the melee attack in case you wanted to see what it looks like. One of the things this game does exceptionally well is that every single gun in this game feels amazing. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of guns in this game that feel like hot molten doo-doo trash, uh, which I I find is kind of a big problem with a lot of first-person shooters, is there's, like, guns that feel really good, and then there's other guns that feel like they were kind of just, like, designed by a committee. And so this game does not have that problem. All the guns are super rad, and you're probably going to have a good time regardless of what it is you like to shoot. These little purple areas, they're corruption rooms. These corruption rooms are going to have various challenges that you need to overcome, whether it be killing lots of enemies without getting hit, or whether it be kind of like a, a jumping puzzle, or like a grinding puzzle, or something like that. Either way, these rooms are almost universally worth it to go after. There's a scout sniper right there. I'm just going to take the energy cell. The energy cells are currencies that you can use inside of shops. And I wasn't particularly enamored. There's been a couple of shotguns in this game that I've enjoyed playing around with, but not really. Same thing goes for sniper rifles. So I tend to like avoid... Man, you guys in your shields, dude. All right, where's your, where's your little shieldy boy guy at? I'm going to jump up here. And we're going to try to blow that guy up. Then I'm going to go down this hallway. And we're just going to try to mortar the hell out of everybody. I don't really know what else to do here. I mean, it's got a really nice explosive radius. So I'm thinking it's going to work out for us. For those guys right there, might not be so useful, though. What you want to do? Let's go, little Flotobots. What do you want to do out here? What you want to do? What you want to do? Thought this was a uh, post-apocalyptic America. What is it that you would like to do right now? All right, big green room up here. Did I miss anything? Doesn't look like I missed anything. We'll go ahead and head on into the shop. Now that we're inside the shop, uh, what are you going to do for me? Weapons check. You look okay, buddy. All right. She had a question mark above her head. I don't know. Ooh. Yeah. The twerp. Is that a, like... Tough call, but yeah, I got to go with the Tommy gun. The The old Thompson is kind of what I want here. What does the gun do? So with the mods that we got on it, it does 10% more damage and it has 5% more range. And every single shot has a chance to be a shotgun blast. And it also has a chance to light enemies on fire. Utterly fantastic. Love to see it. Uh, upgraded, I guess. Nice, dude. It upgraded that affix. Hell yeah, now it's a three star. We should be able to hold on to this for a good long chunk of our run now. I don't think we'll need to play around with it. When you're inside these little shop areas, make sure you look around. Occasionally, there'll be like little wrenches lying around or like little collectibles, like little journals and stuff, and they unlock things. So make sure every single area, you kind of like look around a little bit because you, you will find stuff. Get my health back right there. This one, however, it looks like I've probably gotten everything out of it. Tends to happen when you've played a game for as long as I've played this game. Alright, so this gun is not going to be great for long-range engagements, but it do seem to instantaneously be putting some of these kids to sleep with that disgusting shotgun blast that's tacked onto it. Man. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about right here. We are right at the beginning of something great. Now, because this gun uses burn damage, we're going to want to pick up level ups or we're going to want to pick up perks uh, that will accentuate that burn damage. Or we want to pick things up that will increase our stun chance with each projectile because we are firing such a shocking number of projectiles. Uh, basically, anything that gives us any crude benefit to lead put down range at a high rate is what we're going to want to take. So we're talking crit. Uh, we're talking stun chances. We're talking proc chances. We're talking fire out here that stacks. Oh, is this a throwdown room where I just got to kill enemies till the meter runs out? All right. Sounds like a plan to me. 
get big dog over here man the ammo density on this thing too you can just fire it forever man like it just never ends oh my god what just happened I don't know what just happened but something just is that a werfer man oh, they're trying to tempt me off my spot with a werfer dude the werfer is pretty fun uh, we've got a new perk so line breaker increase your health by 10% hit somebody with a bash or a head bonk Oh, yeah, you can bounce on people's head like Mario Brothers in this game, too. If you jump on somebody's head, it goes like boop, and it does a bunch of damage. Uh, we can increase our weapon damage by 35% at point blank. That's really good. Lock and load, 20% reload speed, and our fire rate goes up by 40 per second every time we reroll. Let's. I like both of those, but I want to see if I can pick up something elemental. So while safety bubble is active, 5% of your scratch damage will come back. Scratch damage is the part of your meter that hasn't been permanently wiped. Every 1.4 seconds, your next weapon shot fires two sparks, dealing eight damage and doing high impact. I'll try it. Yeah, there's the sparks right there. You can see them going off, so. Are they like heat seeking or like robot seeking? Like how do the sparks work? Or is it just like two extra bullets being added on? It's kind of hard to say, but we're definitely gonna wanna upgrade that perk to where it goes off like every other shot instead of every 1.4 seconds, which is actually kind of like a, a chunk monster of a cooldown. It doesn't look like they seek out the enemy from what I can tell. Like it's, oh man, we're doing this. Okay, where's the shield at? There it is. Shield gotta go. Uh, yeah, I felt like he was probably gonna try to melee me, so I figured I'd throw on the old invulnerability shield. All right, enemies down. Oh, you almost got me. That was cheeky, dude. I respect it. A bow and arrow. Robin Hood and Little John walking through the forest, laughing back and forth at what the other had to say. Good old Roger Miller. Oodle lolly, oodle lolly, golly, what a day. If you ever wonder where Jack Black got his kind of like doo -doo 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 like thing from, it's Roger Miller. That's where he got it from. Go listen to uh, Dang Me by Roger Miller. Uh, you can definitely hear the beginning inspirations for, like, Jack Black and also probably Andy from The Office being like, dit, 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 dit. like, Roger Miller was kind of like a goofy country singer that would constantly make little noises with his mouth on recordings and whatnot in order to make people laugh or smile or, like, accentuate the comedic elements of the song. Very popular, which is how he ended up doing the song at the beginning of 1971 or 1972's Robin Hood. I remember what year. I don't know. All I know is like pop culture instead of having a personality. I was never given one of those, so all I know is loads and loads of stuff about pop culture. The good news is we have produced zero pop culture since like 1997 because pop culture largely requires some kind of regionalism. And unfortunately, the internet has wiped out regionalism like that doesn't even exist anymore unless you like live in the Appalachians or something and even then. Like, the Appalachian way of life has been greatly eroded as well. Like, you can 100% tell the difference between my grandma, who grew up in, like, North Georgia, versus, like, you know, her great-grandchildren now, who are from, like, that same area. Big difference. Like, regionalism has been wiped out. Um, I forget what this room does. But anyways, the good news is it's really easy to accumulate pop culture knowledge now, because we don't make pop culture anymore. Uh, let's see. New upgrade. Oh, a free level up. Really? Hell yeah. Quadrinity is always a critical. Reload speed and movement speed up. Yeah, that'd be kind of sexy. I think I'm just going to keep after it with Quadrinity. The barrel cannon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, that's rad as hell. And I mean, it, it's better than our flamethrower just in terms of raw stats. Uh, it looks like that right there has been blocked off by early access, so we can't go that way. But I know this game is getting closer to its release. Let's go up this way. As you can see, this map allows you to get all wild and crazy up on top of it. You can actually get to this upper area and fire down on enemies if that's what you want to do. I didn't find any collectibles or anything up here that I happen to have missed over the course of my many, many, many playthroughs of this game. But maybe someday let's just head to the shop as far as i remember there's no fall damage in this game so you don't have to worry about vaulting yourself off of things what do we have over here a cryo launcher 
It's kind of tempting. Actually, yeah, I kind of dig that, in all honesty. I think that's going to work. Did I just shoot a little girl? Oh, that's my bad, dude. I didn't mean to. El Mustico. I've never fought this guy. This guy's new. I don't know what he does. It seems like a really good idea, though. So does he just put, like, little grenades on the ground? Is that what it is? He just chases me around and, like, tries to put mines everywhere? I still have not the vaguest clue. What is a good idea and what is a bad idea here? Uh, he's taking okay damage. The fire's not really helping, though. He almost got me with that whirlwind. I, I, you know, I kind of felt like he was going to do some kind of, like, burst fire mayhem if I got close to him. It was kind of like the vibe that I got. And as you can see, little summoned enemies during boss fights do not drop HP because that would be entirely too helpful. I have a question. Has the little meter underneath him been going up or been going down this whole time? Not one of those things that I really registered, I guess. Uh, he's definitely like on an enrage timer or something now. He's very cranky and moving very quickly. I think I got him when he was going in for a drink, though. The boss fights in this game, they are very unique. A lot of the different boss fights have different mechanics that you have to pay attention to or you will get absolutely melted. Uh, we've got a couple of wrenches and a rank bonus, so I'll take that. And there you can see right there, after our first boss, we're going to get a big old cutscene full of comic books. They haven't cleaned them up yet. It looks like it's still mostly the sketch art and just like the line coloring, just like it was the last time we covered the game. But eventually they will ink line it and eventually they will lock it in during the early access at some point. We are at the fields. I'm also like really low. My HP is not great right now. What's in this box right here? Uh, that looks like a minigun. Oh, yeah, dude. This is the plasma launcher from Doom. Oh, yeah, dude. That's my stuff right there. Dual blast guns. Huh. Probably throw the launcher in instead of the Tommy, I guess. I don't really know. Oh, this guy's hit scan, huh? Interesting. All right. Well, let's take this thing for a spin, dude. It said that it has homing projectiles. It does, so, like, I don't even really need to aim here. This is actually, like, catastrophically dope. I, I believe it may be the case that they have a sniper in the backfield. And in case you were wondering, you can indeed play this game in multiplayer. So if you, want, if you didn't want to play by yourself, you wanted to play with some friends, too... You can 100% do that. This game already has multiplayer baked on into it uh, with the co-op funsies, just in case that's the kind of thing that suits your fancy. I'm just going to kind of, like, launch bullets randomly. Like, since this gun sort of does not require aim, I feel like I'm going to get really, really lazy uh, about the way that I use this thing. Damage feels like it could go up a little bit, but that extra 30% mag... God, that scared me. That extra 30% magazine that it has on it is utterly incredible and is really helping out. I feel like I can just hold down the trigger on this thing basically permanently. Let's head to the next zone. Can I get up top? I would like to be up top. I would like the advantage of height here if I can have it. I do wish this had some kind of elemental attunement or like damage on it, like a burn or like a freeze or something like that. Feels like it would definitely benefit from that by quite a bit. I just got smacked. What did I get smacked by? Uh, I don't know. I got smacked by something though. My health looks terrible. We've leveled up again. We've got the punch catalog. So taking damage increases punch bolt spar rakes by, oh yeah. So 
200% on 1.4. Unless that means it fires six of them now instead of firing two. I don't know if that's going to affect the cooldown or if that's going to affect the amount of sparks that come out. Fire rate here. 200% of 1.4 seconds is kind of a confusing way to word it. I don't know. Top, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Mm, it doesn't modify the tooltip on the fly in the top left. So I think we'll just have to feel it out. Like, we're just going to have to see how it feels in the field. Uh, I believe it's firing the two little bolts faster. It was just difficult for me to figure out what a 200% speed increase would be. A 200% speed decrease would be on 1.4 seconds, because normally 200% would mean like 2.8 seconds, but in that case, did they mean they like cut it in half, so now it does it like every 0.7 seconds? Like, I don't know, dude, because that would be like 50% reduction. Like, I don't know, dude, confusing. Maths, how do they work? A level five minigun. 40% damage, movement speed, fire rate over one second while shooting. Your projectiles pierce, and it has 10% more fire rate. That does mag dump very, very quickly. Well, double miniguns. You know what I like, chat. You know what I'm into. Ridiculous, absurd quantities of DACA. That's all I care about. Everything else is stupid. Watch out for those. So there's like these little guys that run up on you and they look like little robot cops and they taser you. Uh, they are by far the most dangerous enemy in the game. I cannot express to you how dangerous they are. If you get taken out by the robot cops, it basically slows you up and it's really bad. They basically they put like uh, electro shackles on you or something. Oh boy. Yep. I knew this was going to go poorly. Oh boy. This is just too much mayhem for my old brain. We made it. I mean, what else can you ask for? The Sulfator Shotgun. Oh, yeah, dude. Okay. So, a mini shotgun. A mini got gun is mini got gun. That sounds like a baby got back type situation. Maybe it's just the amount of syllables that made it feel that way. I don't know. Uh, let's continue out south, and we'll see if we can wipe out the enemies. But I firmly believe this is one of the finest roguelites on Steam. Like, if you have money to spend, uh, and you want a first-person shooter roguelite, it's pretty much either this game, or you can go with, uh... Oh, boy, I'm pretty beat up right now. Or you can go with Gunfire Reborn. I think both are of equal quality, and both are incredible. That's kind of what bummed me out. A while back, I covered a game called Dead Link, which was a very good game. But Dead Link was kind of doing the same thing that these two games are doing, but like worse and less focused. It was still like a 9 out of 10, but I was really bummed out to have to review it as like, I can't recommend this because Gunfire Reborn and RoboQuest exist. And like, it, I just, I can't in good conscience be like, yeah, go get this game over two other games that are doing the exact same shtick that this game does. Just like better, you know what I mean? Like it's one of those tough conflicts you run into. As an indie games impression guy, what is that? Six bucks, weapon, weapon pocket reload time by 150%. Yeah, your weapons reload in your pocket when you don't have them out after like a certain amount of time. I suppose that could be helpful. I guess. I mean, it's not like I'm hurting for money. Is there like a Healy guy in here? I was going to say, there's got to be a guy that heals around here somewhere. We've got a weapon crate. It has the blast sniper. It has a blast gun. What is a blast gun? Okay, it's just like an energy Glock. It's got a little crash dummy symbol on the side of it, though. There's a toy that I haven't heard of in a while. Crash dummies. Wait, did I drop the wrong... Oh, no. Okay. Upgrade my minigun. It is now a level 6 minigun. Probably upgrade the sulfator, too, because why not? Extra damage is extra damage. I don't know why I'm doing the upgrades, because I need to go back and show you metagames. So I'm about to suicide anyways. I'm about to actually just, like, throw myself into a wall of bullets on purpose so that you guys can see the metagame progression and how it's developed since the last time we covered the game because they have completely and totally redone everything. I'm not going to stop 
shooting because I gotta feel like I went down swinging. Otherwise, I feel bad about myself, but eh, I'm dead. All right. We've been killed. Let's go back and we'll take a look at the overall currency that the game has. And so during your runs, you're gonna get wrenches. These wrenches can be used. So you've got the locker room over here. The locker room will unlock gadgets. And gadgets are basically passives you give yourself before every single run. Uh, they make you take less damage from traps or like move faster, or, like increase the amount of money that drops, that kind of stuff. Uh, but the workshop, this is brand new. This was not a thing the last time I played the game. You will get wrenches as you play through the game and as you beat bosses. These wrenches, you can spend them on various upgrades and side grades inside of this tree. And so far I've been pretty happy with just about everything in here. Uh, there are bad trees and there are good trees in video gaming, and this one seems to be leaning towards the good direction. There's lots of things to unlock. Every single one of these has like five levels of upgrading you can do to it, uh, which means that you are going to be dumping enormous amounts of currency into upgrading in between runs, which then incentivizes you to do well in terms of both speed and killing and clearing. These are the classes. You got the Guardian, the Recon, the Engineer, and the Commando. Commando is pretty cool. He's got a rocket launcher that comes default. And then I haven't found the lost javelin yet. Haven't seen him. Don't know where he's at. He's around somewhere, but I haven't found him yet. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sit through the pile of find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were fooling around with RoboQuest, a game that I feel is one of the finest roguelites on Steam. I will catch you all later. Thank you for hanging out with me. And that's all I got. Bye, folks.